have an 86, an 87, an 88, and an 89. And what we're going to do is we're going to do in a separate video a tasting of the flight of these. But there is a slight problem or a slight concern with one of these bottles. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and use our Corvin and we're going to go ahead and um, get some wine out of this one bottle that has, I'm sorry, it's actually this one, the 88. It has some leakage. You can see there's some residue on the bottle. The label is stained. And you can also see that the, um, I think this is called the Ullage, is um, down what they call high shoulder in the wine auction world. When they tell you, especially about these older wines, exactly what the level is. Maybe you can see if I backlight it, that this wine is down in the high shoulder. Really good contrast or comparison is this wine here, which is at the bottom of the neck, um, and this one here, which is really more at the at the middle of the neck. So I'm not sure if that light's helping or not. But anyway, so this bottle is compromised, the 88. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get a look at this and see if, um, get a look at the wine, get a taste of the wine, and see if it's something worth drinking. This is going to be unedited and we're just going to go ahead and get it taken care of. Now, one of the things about these older bottles of wine, and go ahead if we get a shot, we can see that we even have some liquid wine right up on top of the cork here. It's a little scary, I'll be honest with you. Not sure if I want to drink this or not, but we'll just, uh, we'll just do what we can. Now, as I was saying, the, um, and by the way, on the nose, it actually doesn't really come across as all that, as all that evil. One of the things about these corks, any of the older corks, is that they can be a bear to get out, but luckily we're using our Coravin, and we don't have to worry about removing the cork today. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this, this basically just, uh, there's an argon gas cylinder in here that is replaceable, and this just replaces the air in the, in the bottle with argon, allowing the wine to flow out through this little nozzle here, and um, we're going to go ahead and, and then we can pour the wine without having to worry about mixing it with oxygen and then having to drink it in like, you know, the next 12 hours or so. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to just push the Corbin needle through the cork. That went through really, really easy. Um, again, it indicated that the cork maybe is compromised. Usually it takes a bit more of a, of a push to get through there. So let's go ahead and just see what happens. So we'll go ahead and charge up the, the argon there and pouring out. Right away I can see that this wine has a, a, um, a little bit of a brownish cast. Not necessarily a big deal, especially for an older California Cabernet. That argon, when it stops pouring, you get a little bit of the gas and that did froth up a little bit, which gave me a real brown froth, which again is a little bit scary. So uh, what I'm going to do is with my um, barely remembered sommelier training, let's go ahead and get a, a look at this. First of all, this wine is a red wine, but it is really brown. It's really oxidized. I'm not looking forward to drinking it necessarily. When I look at it, it is not a clear wine. It's really turgid. It is... Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost opaque. Even as I swirl it, I can see there's a lot of what, you know, you might think would be a highly sedimented, maybe an unfiltered wine, but I think in this case, it's really just, just compromised. I'm going to use this paper towel that I used to dot the, 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 uh, the cork, and I'm going to look at it from a color perspective. So I would say that this is um, brown with a really pronounced almost orange rim and that of course is indicative of some age especially that rim and that really um, high delineation so looking at it, it I would go ahead and give the alcohol on it probably a medium medium plus uh, without having remembered what I saw on the label I'd say this is probably about a 12 and a half 13 percent alcohol wine and if I look at the label I think we're gonna see it is 
13.2. Okay, so that's not bad. Now on the nose, it definitely has some some dried fruit. There's definitely a, a leathery aspect to it, but there is some dried, maybe even crushed dried rose petals. Almost like a stewed plum, really reminiscent of an old California, an older California Cabernet. Again, this is an 88 from a compromised bottle. I'm kind of scared to drink it, I'll be honest with you. So let's go ahead and just do this. First of all, I do want to say before I do that, I am getting some, some slate, some, um, not really getting much in the way of wood, but I am definitely getting a, a really high minerality. And also there's even an undercurrent, my eyes might be playing with me, but almost an undercurrent of rust, if you, if you can believe it. So, Actually, that's quite nice. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting to hate it. I was expecting it to be bad. It is, um, it's definitely a, a jammy wine. The fruit is really there, but it's, it's, uh, it's soft and kind of muted. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's quite nice. It's, um, it's got a, a hell of a finish. I mean, it's got some nice legs on it, right? Certainly, it's visually um, more appealing on the side of the glass than in the glass. Definitely has an astringent cat um, character to it. It's really, uh, really drying me out, but it's got an amazingly long finish to it. And um, honestly, it's it's really nice. It's it's surprisingly pleasant. So, with that, uh, you know, 1988 Demore Cabernet from a troublesome bottle. And uh, salute.